today we have with us Duncan Rayside. He joined Headway Wealth in January of this year and you're an independent financial planner, aren't you, Duncan? So what does that entail? Uh, it entails every aspect of, of, of finance. So whether it be longer term pension planning, uh, shorter term planning for um, you know, education funding for children's uh, higher education needs. Uh, and often we get on to kind of legacy planning mm -hmm. for what people leave behind to their loved ones uh, when they eventually pass on. So every aspect. What led you to this profession? Um, I originally started off as a bit of a computer geek. So I did a computer science uh, degree up in Newcastle in uh, Hamza's hometown. God's country. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I originally started off life working for PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, but it wasn't in a particularly client facing role. And I realized that, um, you know, I wanted my career to progress in a slightly different direction where I was client facing. Um, I moved to Dubai in 2005. And after a couple of years, I kind of happened across an opportunity to get into wealth management and you know it kind of went from there so I've been involved in wealth management since uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. And is that how you met Elliot? It Hamza? is indeed <laughs> yeah our paths across we kind of knew one another working at different companies over in the Middle East and then I eventually ended up working alongside uh, Elliot and under Hamza uh, for uh, a short while and we, we stayed in touch. So yeah. What do you enjoy most about your role? Headway has got um, a, s a very different culture to companies I've worked at in the past and I love the culture so mm. we it's, it's a very flat culture we can talk to one another about day-to-day -day things with our clients um, I love the direction that we've moved with the new branding etc and I think you know we're you know pretty forward thinking company and I think that over the long term is going to be very appealing to you know our growing client base. Mm. So. And if you weren't doing wealth management what would you be in a in another life um i would have said a professional footballer a few years ago sure. but these boys have seen me play so uh, <laughs> that's probably i you know i don't really know in all honesty um who knows i might have stayed you know a bit, a bit of a computer geek behind a, a screen etc i quite like spreadsheets but um i do miss i would miss the client facing aspects mm -hmm. of things so how does your um, computer background feed into your work it's actually been um a real benefit over the years because obviously a big part of financial planning is num crunching numbers and figures and projecting so uh, I was lucky enough to work with a few uh, pretty savvy people on excel spreadsheets when at the very beginning of my career and that's always stood me in good stead because I can use that when I need to but you know financial planning's not all about numbers and figures it's about you know goals and ambitions mm -hmm. etc so having a feel for both sides of the fence is um, an important feature of a financial planner. So your job is giving people advice. What's yep. the best advice you've been given? Uh, the best advice I've been given uh, dates back probably to um, when I was finishing off my A-levels and looking at universities. And um, uh, a friend of the family uh, was um, a university lecturer at the time. So he was uh, a maths lecturer at uh, UCL mm -hmm. in London. And I was kind of struggling for a bit of direction, didn't know kind of what path to follow, etc. looking at various different options in terms of a university course. And he gave me some pretty affirmative advice. He, he worked in a university system himself. And um, he just he just encouraged me to think about, okay, where do you want this to take you? So make sure that you choose a subject that is geared towards helping you achieve the next step mm -hmm. after that, which I took on board and I did and ended up being pretty good advice and set me on a pretty pretty good path. What was computer science leading you to? What was that goal? I think I think it was just, you know, you t I had certain skill sets. I was quite good at maths. Um, so it was kind of a natural direction for mm -hmm. me to, ha to head. And at the time... I'm a bit a few years older than these guys. Technology was really booming, so that was around the dot com yeah. era, and it was a re it was the real buzz at, of the time. So I thought, well, obviously this is where the world look like looks like it's going. So it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to sort of get education in that sector. Headway Wealth's motto is life your way, so living life on your terms. Uh, what does that mean to you? Um, well, I think um, it just means. Creating a lifestyle for yourself, both financially and non-financially, mm -hmm. that you can enjoy and uh, enables you to do the things you want to do, spend the time uh, with the people that you want to spend the time with. And finance is an important aspect to it. It's not the be all and end all, but it is an important aspect. And I think that planning your finance, uh, just 
I suppose ultimately it just gives you freedom, mm. um, uh, freedom to live kind of life on your terms, your way. So let's talk about your work-life balance. What sort of hobbies do you enjoy? How do you live life um, your way? I've always been very keen on sport. So me and the boys used to play quite a bit of football together when we were in Dubai. Unfortunately, my back's given up now. <laughs> so now I'm on the coaching side of the fence. So I have a, a nine and a 10-year-old boy. Uh, I am the manager of my nine-year-old boy's football team. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, rather than our 9 a.m. Monday meetings, my football games on a Sunday are my favourite part of my week. For So... Uh, I'm sure you have all the insurance as well to make sure your back's okay because you've been taking your life seriously <laughs> and in, as we yeah, get older. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> you've always got to think about the sensible stuff. So life insurance and all that kind of stuff is a important aspect to, you know, mm. being a dad and being a, a family person. How do you plan for your clients? Do you have a five-year plan? Is it one-year plan? How do you work with what they need? Okay, so um, it depends what age they are and it depends what their time horizons are for needing to utilise the wealth that we're helping them build. Okay, so if you've got um, a client that's maybe in their 40s or early 50s and they've got a target date of mid 60s, you'll take a different approach to the planning for a client like that than you would do that someone uh, for someone that's perhaps much closer to uh, retiring and needing to generate an income. How do you help your clients find a balance? Um, I think the starting point is always a budget. Okay, so run through the budget. There's a kind of finite list of items that we could all spend our money on and you need to run through that list and identify which ones are absolutely essential and which ones are discretionary um, and then work out of the discretionary ones how much you need you want to apportion to each one of those areas um, so for example from a financial planning perspective obviously we touched upon it earlier on life insurance is is a must for everyone particularly uh, younger people with families, etc. It's mm. really important to uh, protect what you have first before thinking about building anything over and above that. Um, but obviously, people have a budget, and there's only X amount of money available each month to spend. Um, so run through the budget, work out what elements you can't change the spend on, and the elements that you can change the spend on, just work out what a sensible apportionment would be mm. towards that. Um, and making sure that you, you leave money left over for the fun things in life yeah. as well.